Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing another university video. You guys really liked my last ones and I also had a lot of questions about this particular topic. So I thought I'd make a video all about it just to kind of tell you my tips and tricks for this particular subject. And this video is going to be all about how to get a first class degree at university. So how to get a first in your degree or if you're in America, how to basically do well and get like a 4.0 average. So I'm basically going to be sharing with you how I went from a low to one to a first. I ended up graduating with a first this summer and I've had a lot of questions about like study tips and what exactly I did to bring up my grade. So I think this can be really helpful, especially if you're in second or first year and you need a little bit of guidance on how to improve your grades and how to make sure that you get that first class degree at the end. So I'm going to be splitting this video into a number of parts. I'm going to segment it in the description. So if you want to skip ahead or back to any of the segments, then just look at the description and click on the bit that you're interested in. But I'm basically going to be covering everything that I think is important on getting a first and kind of like like how to do it and also how to improve your grade if you're at a low 2-1 or maybe like a 2-2. Two two. So as you guys already know, I studied psychology at the University of Manchester. I also struggled with anxiety for a long time. So I think it's really important to highlight that because even with anxiety, I managed to get a first and I managed to go from a low 2-1 to a first from second year to third year. So first of all, I'm just gonna be talking to you about my kind of overall grades and how they progressed. So in first year, I didn't really take it as seriously as I should have. I I got a medium 2-1 at the end of first year. In second year, I was struggling quite a lot with anxiety, but I ended up getting a 62 average, which then was very difficult for me to pull up in third year, but I managed to get only first grades in third year. And I'm basically gonna be sharing with you what I thought I was doing wrong and what I think improved my grades the most dramatically and sort of like what I did to make sure that I got that first in the end. So the first section of this video is time management. So this one is really important. I had absolutely no idea how to manage my time when I was in first year. I was kind of spending all of my time having fun and not very much time working, which I think is very common for first year because first year is not really taken as seriously and it didn't count for me. But I wish I'd got the foundations in first year where I actually worked hard because it would have made the work a lot easier in second and third year so in terms of time management I think it's very important to have a schedule from the beginning and I think the best way to do this is to have specific activities that you go to every week for example at my uni every Wednesday there's like an AU sports social so in third year I only went out on Wednesdays and Saturdays and that way I was able to spend the rest of my time in the library or working so managing your time is really really important the most important thing that I think I would recommend is to have a planner, a schedule planner. I was very over-organized in third year when I started caring about my grades a little bit more and having a planner and seeing exactly which things you need to do and when you need to do them and when you need to submit them by is really important. It's also really satisfying to tick things off once you've completed them. So in terms of time management, planners are very very important and also making sure that you have specific days where you're always having fun and days where you're always working so that way you kind of know okay today's a Wednesday so I'm not going to be doing work tonight and then you don't mix them up and you don't feel as stressed because you have this sort of like schedule to stick to. Also in terms of time management I think going to lectures is the best way to manage your time with lectures because I thought it would be really clever to leave them all and do all the podcasts and that it would be so much easier but it really isn't and I I think the best way to manage your time in terms of having the work done is going to lectures and taking notes in your lectures and making sure that you're allocating your time to working because then your brain won't be confused and you won't be like oh I actually want to be having fun right now because you'll be like this day is for not having fun and this day is for studying. I know it sounds really boring but it's so good once you get into a rhythm like that because you end up doing the work that you need to do and you end up having just as much fun as you would without without as much stress. So time management is very 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 important. This point is note taking. So note taking I'm going to split this into two parts so the first part is going to be note taking in lectures and then the second one is going to be revision so throughout the year in lectures what I did was I had the PowerPoint lectures and we used to get the slides before the lecture which I think is pretty common in any uni and at the bottom of the PowerPoint you can write notes so what I would do is I would watch the lecture like live in the lecture hall and I would write down all the important information that the lecturer said regarding that specific slide doing this will Will be really really useful for when you make your revision notes later because the stuff that they say that 
you think is important you just add to the bottom of those slides and you just kind of write them in that little box I'll put a picture of what I mean here so you kind of see what I mean but taking notes in lectures that's how I did it so I just wrote little notes based on what the lecturer was saying on the bottom of the slides and I thought that was really really useful for taking notes so I only had my laptop I know some people prefer paper but for me I feel like having everything on one laptop in one place was a lot less stressful because I didn't have little bits of paper flying around and stuff like that so taking notes in lectures that's how I did that then after the lectures I would print them out and then add kind of like summary notes on the three lines next to the slide I'll show you a picture of that as well that is really really useful to kind of reabsorb the information and what you'll notice is if you're taking notes systematically from the beginning you'll realize that the workload is nowhere near as much as you might have thought it would be in the beginning so if you're kind of allocating your time and you're taking notes and you're doing it systematically you'll find it a lot easier to get those better grades even though you're probably not putting in as much effort as you would if you were cramming because you're kind of allocating it across the whole year so taking notes after lectures is really important and that's how I did that in terms of seminars so I never thought seminars were very helpful for me because with psychology it's just reading a paper and for me I preferred reading it in my own time but they can definitely be helpful if you don't understand a paper. I'd say for seminars it's really important to be prepared for them so read the paper before the seminar and then go in and write notes or clarify bits that you don't understand. For me I was not that good at kind of staying on top of things in seminars but I think if I went back and did another undergraduate that's how I would do it. So seminars it's just a similar kind of thing. I used to get the um, the paper on my laptop in a PDF and then I would highlight the bits that I thought were important and that's all I did for seminars and then if it was like specifically confusing then I might open like a Word document and have little seminar notes that I would write on Word documents. I loved Word documents for notes for sure because I would just kind of like label them based on subject and based on like seminars or lab classes or whatever and then you could always go back to them if you wanted some knowledge to fill in with your lecture notes and that kind of thing. So note taking throughout the year, that's how I did that. In terms of labs, that's another thing. I didn't really have labs in third year because in third year I was doing my own experiment. So that's a completely different thing and I can make a whole video on that, but that's kind of its own thing and you just have to stay on top of that. But in terms of labs in first and second year, what I would recommend is a similar system to lectures. So making sure you're taking notes on what they're saying so that you're, you're kind of like cleared up on what to do and what you need to do away when you're not there. So the next part is revision. This bit is really, really important. For me, I tried out lots of different ways of revising, ended up creating a system that was actually really, really useful. So what I did is I bought these large flashcards from WH Smith. I'll insert a picture here. They were color coded. I loved color coding, so I always coded it based on like the color of the lecture. So like I'd have yellow for one, one module and like pink for another module. But I color coded the flashcards and that way your brain kind of associates the color with the lecture. So I'd always keep like one color for one lecture and like change it up like that if that makes sense. So the way that I would do flashcards is after I would got all of my lecture notes from the PowerPoints, I'd use the printouts that I'd like summarized and I'd put them on flashcards with like the answer on one side and the question on the other and I made so many flashcards let me tell you I used to make so many flashcards I had stacks like that for like every single subject because I just loved flashcards I thought they were so useful because you just memorize it and then you put it away and you know exactly what it is this is also really helpful for knowing like researcher names and what they did so in terms of revision I would just write a ton of flashcards and then the seminar notes that we had so like the extra reading and stuff I would make flashcards on that but I would put the name of the researcher on one side and then on the other side a summary of what they found this was really really useful for essay exams because you end up knowing so like what the researcher did and their name and that kind of associates to each other and then you remember exactly what to write and having citations in your essays is very impressive if it's an exam essay so I definitely recommend condensing the reading into flashcards so that you can kind of like know the key points and then you can link it back to the theory and the knowledge that you knew before 
So that's what I would do in terms of flashcards. Another thing that I would do were these huge mind maps with like the most important points and then they'd link down and I'd put like the researcher names and different experiments and sort of link back to it. So I did a huge mind map for every single one. That I definitely think was useful too because I have a very visual memory. If you have one too then this will probably work for you but having the flashcards and the big mind maps were really useful for me to remember the information. I'll post some pictures of like my revision notes because I used to make so many and they were so pretty and like colour coordinated and I think that definitely motivated me as well to revise because of that. I also used to make like a big poster with like all the researcher names and just sort of like quiz myself and memorise them and what they did and I did that in like the same sort of system as you can see here. So I just made a ton of notes for revision and just sort of like tried to memorise as much as I could and I think that's sort of like the best system especially for psychology because obviously you need to understand the experiments but a lot of it is memorizing sort of like the facts what happened the names of the researchers stuff like that so that was really really useful for exam revision the next part is for essays so essays and coursework where you have sort of like unlimited time well not unlimited time but like a couple of weeks to do it for this I would say always stay on top of it and do it sort of like as soon as you can but don't rush it and sort of like spread it out over a period of time instead of leaving it to the end because I think what I noticed with essays is the more that you redraft it the higher your grade would be because the more you redraft it you realise what you haven't written as well as you thought you might like to write and redrafting is really really important for essays so in terms of essays I would definitely recommend to leave like loads of time and to redraft and then to make them more impressive what helped me was to do a lot of extra reading but in terms of extra reading I know that sounds really scary because you're like oh I don't want to do extra reading but in terms of extra reading I would just find like an important or like a really interesting article and then I'd link it into the essay and it would just not be from the lecture content so it would show that I've kind of like gone out of my way to do that and that used to help boost my grade too so finding like really interesting articles that you can just link back is always fun. The next point is stationary so for this I started off in first year with like 16 billion highlighters and like all this coloured paper and stuff and while I used that for exam revision most of my stuff was just on my laptop so I'd say like don't go overboard with stationery because it's more important that you know the content and that you're doing it systematically than making it pretty. I'm definitely guilty of this I used to think the prettier I make it like the better my grade but that's definitely not the case so I'd say like maybe tone it down with stationery and don't go overboard and just really like use your laptop because your laptop is so useful <laughs> in terms of like lecture stuff I realised that it's so much easier than writing it out and I wasn't really using it as I could have been using it and when I learned how to like do the little notes on the powerpoints it just made my life so much easier. The next point is stress management. So in terms of stress management I'd say it's really important to put pressure on yourself. I know that's like weird advice but in first and second year I was always like oh like I'll be fine with like you know like a passing grade but then that didn't motivate me to do any better and when I thought I know I'm capable of first I want a first then I started putting a little bit more pressure on myself and it made me sort of like more driven to get that so I think it's important to sort of like have goals and to put that pressure on yourself but obviously don't stress yourself out and don't burn yourself out and I think the best way to do that is to do it systematically from first to third year and not cram because I think that's where the most stress comes from especially in second year I didn't really know like how to study properly and I just used to cram and it used to make me so stressed and especially with anxiety it's just difficult so in terms of stress management it's just important to stay on top of things and to have things organized and also just to make sure that you do have those goals but you're not sort of like burning yourself out so in terms of stress management it's just really important that you know that you're on track. Next point is extracurriculars. This again I'd say is like really important to balance and I think having extracurriculars actually made me work harder. Being in a society made me work harder because I just felt like I had sort of like things to look forward to and like events that we'd go to and it was just a good way to sort of like manage my time especially if it's a sport and you have like training then you know that you have to get stuff done before you go to training and stuff like that. So in terms of Extracurricular is really important to have them in terms of like helping you create that schedule that definitely helped me in third year too and yeah I definitely recommend that but I've said that a million times so I guess you guys already know that I definitely recommend the sport. 
The final point is like study locations. This I think is really important. In first year, I would always study in my bedroom and I thought that like the library was like some kind of pit of darkness and I just never wanted to go there. But this is so bad because your brain associates being in your room with relaxation. If you're working there, you'll never be able to feel relaxed there and you won't be able to work systematically there either. So it's really important to divide the, the like space from like where you work and where you relax. So it's really important to make use of libraries. If you don't like libraries, I spent a lot of my time working in cafes. I just thought it was really relaxing. You could get your coffee, you could get your food and you just like work there. And then I also liked the atmosphere of like a couple of people being around and like not being on my own. And a little bit of noise actually helps me sometimes to concentrate because I just feel sort of like less alone. And it sounds really sad, but like I promise I did go to cafes like with friends too. But in terms of studying, I just thought cafes were like really relaxing to study in. Um, so don't confine yourself to just the library or just your room because there's loads of places you can study and you just need to be open to trying different places, seeing what works for you, seeing like where you can concentrate best. So I definitely recommend sort of like branching out with like study spaces because that definitely helps you stay concentrated and stay motivated. So that's just about everything I've got for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know and I'd be happy to make them and I will see you very soon.